Singapore's strong business culture and prosperous economy have been well known for quite some time. Regrettably, the collapse of Singapore's biggest firm in recent years has been a tremendous blow to the economy of the nation. Singapore at risk of falling into a recession next year. Singapore is not returning to a pre-COVID-19 world and must chart a new path now. We still are forecasting growth for 2023 as of now. This video will explain the reasons that led to the failure of this significant company and what it may mean for other regional enterprises. The chain of circumstances that led to the demise of this multinational organization shows how susceptible even apparently successful businesses are to sudden and unexpected disruption. On November 16, 2021, a Singaporean company called Sea Limited, which is responsible for popular brands like Shopee and Garena, was rated one of the biggest companies in the world. With over $200 billion in value, Sea Limited outranked any other firm in Singapore. The combined value of DBS Bank, OCBC Bank, and UOEB Bank, Singapore's three largest banking financial companies, was less than that of Sea Limited. All of Singapore's current economic foundation was laid by these banks. It's fascinating that the valuation of this new technological company exceeded that of the other three put together. What was it doing differently? The events of 2022. When it came to business values, Sea Limited had arrived in the big leagues, appearing on stock exchanges all around the globe. A year later, however, C Limited's market worth had collapsed to around $25 billion. Concerns have been raised about the company's viability following its meteoric rise to global prominence and Southeast Asia's crown jewel in 2021. Its current valuation of $33 million is significantly lower than that of the three largest Singaporean banks. Not only has the company's value been impacted by the restricted valuation, but the industry as a whole is affected as well. Grab was originally worth $40 billion at its height in 2021. One year later, the corporation as a whole had its enormous ball drop to less than $10 billion, leaving many investors in Singapore and residents of Singapore, as well as customers of its goods and services throughout Southeast Asia, to wonder what would have happened if Sea Limited and Grab Holdings had collapsed, considering the potential for such a dramatic decline in value. When do they plan to file for bankruptcy, if at all? Let's talk about all of these things and how two Singaporean firms went from being well admired to becoming the worst flops in Southeast Asian business history. Challenges Before we get into the particular challenges that each firm faced, we must first consider one additional aspect of the overall disaster. We need to address both the internal management of the organization and the macro causes that contributed to its decline. The decline in their worth coincides with that of many other eight firms as well. In layman's words, it's not just these two businesses, but the whole planet that faced a problem in the tech sector during this time C Limited and Grab Holdings are among the many eight firms, notably those operating in fast-growing sectors, that have faced a variety of difficulties in the previous year. Interest rates have also increased as a result of unexpectedly high inflation. Much of Europe is already experiencing double-digit inflation, while the United States' inflation rate, at 7.1%, also remains stubbornly high despite the recent increase in interest rates. The continuous conflict in Russia has caused a rise and fall in the price of a wide range of goods. Oil prices, for instance, have increased by more than 50%, from their low of $76 to their current level of $130. Crucially, Shortages in the semiconductor business, a vital component that assures development in the industry, are impacting the whole technological sector. The other reason is management on the inside. The massive decline of the two firms may also have been caused by management mistakes and global problems. From a valuation perspective, C Limited and Grab Holding have performed poorly when it comes to the consequences of their valuation, which also has to do with the firm being overpriced. Their company's worth increased dramatically over the course of only a few months, which is something else we need to take into account. C Limited's market valuation was less than $20 billion before the pandemic hit. Contrarily, its value surged to almost $200 billion during the epidemic. Their goods and services were still available to the public despite the C Limited lockout, 
which was a major factor. As a contributing factor in their success, C Limited credits COVID-19, the massive growth of C Limited. The end of 2021, when C Limited published its annual report, its total revenues increased by a factor of two or three. Shopee brought in $2 billion in revenue for C Limited in 2020, while Garena brought in $2.1 billion. The remaining $1.1 billion came from new services and other smaller companies. In 2021, C Limited recorded total sales of $9.9 billion, more than double the previous year's amount. The same companies are behind both of these sales trends. Both Shopee and Garena contributed significantly to the total. As the market anticipated C Limited's expansion to continue, and most investors jumped at the chance to acquire the company's shares. The fact that it managed to quadruple its revenue in only one year is even more impressive when you consider that not every billion-dollar firm can achieve the same. Thus, C Limited's expansion was hailed as a remarkable achievement. Experts have suggested that most of the online economy in the Southeast Asian region has untapped potential, and they were branching out internationally in a major way. They were expanding into new territories throughout Asia, Europe, and South America, hoping to capture as many potential customers as possible. What went wrong? One thing, however, was wrong. All of them were just guesses at this point. They were unquestionably destined to take the reins in their own territory. Yet the value of the internet economy at the time was far lower than what it is now, despite the fact that they were the market leader in Southeast Asia. Although C Limited's internet economy was worth approximately $200 billion by the end of 2021, the whole Southeast Asian regions was just $174 billion. People in the region believed that C Limited would gobble up the entire internet market share because the term internet economy refers to the sum of all the value created by the internet, for example, e-commerce, ride hailing, live streaming, etc. However, the company only operated in a selected few industries. As a result, their international activities were suffering as well. Due to the intense competition in these markets, Shopee decided to pull out of several foreign ones, including those in India, Spain, France, and other areas of South America. The company's losses were staggeringly large as well. The company's loss of the prior quarter was a mere $24 million. Yet, it had recorded a staggering $500,000 this time around. What did Grab do differently? On the other hand, Grab was quite different. The reopening after COVID was great for business since everyone was eager to schedule a ride-hailing service, but the firm was still in trouble because of its huge losses. The public offering of stock is expected to take place before the year's end. That's the only time of year they let anybody look at their financial records. Everyone expected it to be a huge, ambitious business that capitalized on every possible business opportunity with large sales. The difficulty was that it was still a young firm at the time, and it required a substantial investment to get off the ground. This meant that it was wasting a lot of money. The amount of money they are wasting is in the billions. In order to maintain operations and achieve goals, of course, they constantly need new bank loans or new sources of funding from other financial instruments. As the corporation's stock is now publicly traded, losses totaled roughly $1.4 billion between the end of 2021 and the second quarter of 2022. Their cash reserves shrank from $4.8 billion to $2.6 billion. The failure of Singapore's biggest firm, which was previously a symbol of the country's robust economic position, has resulted in massive instability and sent shockwaves across the whole nation. The ramifications of its collapse have been far-reaching and long-lasting, harming not just those who directly relied on it for their livelihoods, but also the economy as a whole. Those who directly depended on it for their livelihoods have been negatively impacted. It is essential to use this incident as a teaching tool to illustrate the need for increased financial control and regulation in order to prevent the occurrence of situations of a similar kind in the future. That's all for today, guys. If you like this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and press the bell icon for any new updates. See you in the next one.